My next guest I met four years ago uh, while working on a, uh, an international music uh, format show called The Voice. Uh, we worked, uh, I met him while working on The Voice Angola. Uh, the show was shot in South Africa, Johannesburg. All the contestants were flown in from Angola and they also flew in uh, Portuguese speaking video editors. A guest from Portugal, and uh, that's how I met my next guest. Oi, Bernardo, tudo bem? Oi, Siraj, tudo bem? <laughs> did I sound like a Portuguese or did I get it wrong? Yes, 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 pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> how you been doing, brother? Yeah, what's um, it, four, five, four years ago? Yeah, yeah. It seems like it was like 10 years ago, so much went through, so in, in, the, in between, but yeah, uh, 2016, so four years ago. Well, with my grey hair, also it makes it look like it's much longer. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> you and Joao were working your asses off on that show. Just give us a quick rundown of what happened on that show. Okay, okay. So, The Voice Angola, yeah, it was the first The Voice recorded in Africa. So, everyone was with big expectations. And we had to build a team that, speak, that, that were able to speak Portuguese. But at the same time, it was being recorded in South Africa, which means we had a multicultural team. Uh, I think, in my opinion, the project won a lot with that because um, we could meet, we, can, we, we, could, we were able to bring our uh, knowledge and energy together. So uh, my part of the show was as a senior offline editor. Uh, Forward slash slave. Yeah. <laughs> Me and the other editor was well. We came directly from Portugal. Uh, João already edited uh, The Voice in Portugal. I didn't, I was working with a national broadcaster. Uh, so we just came and met the team and from one day, one day to another, we were cutting, cutting, cutting and correcting stuff and editing content and making experiences and trying to get to a nice result. Um, well, you were actually editing seven days a week, almost 24, 24 to 26 <laughs> hours a day. When I met uh, you, you guys looked like you were that close to yeah. burning out. Yeah, forever, it, it seemed forever. Yeah, because uh, we were, were only two and then we were three with you, Siraj. Uh, the, and normally a show like this would have a team of about five, well, uh, with a big budget show like the Americans, they probably have 10 uh, editors, but I know in South Africa, we're looking at a team of five. Yes, in Portugal as well, it, should, it would be a team of at least of four or five people. Yeah. Uh, so like I said in the beginning, uh, it was the first, first the voice re recorded in, in Africa. So we, it was a, a, a learning process as well for everyone. So we just, as uh, on, on, on the moving, as the show was moving forward, uh, the production was adapting. So that can explain, that can explain how we started with two and then to three and then to four because we had another, another South African editor, assistant editor, it was Sne. Oh yes, yeah, can, I was wondering, I couldn't remember his, his, his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And but, but, but I think it was a win-win situation because I've learned with you, I've learned with him, I've learned with everyone, and uh, it was a mix of, like I said, of knowledge and international inputs that came along and make a. I'm proud of being part of that project, which is well, the most important. Gostou, 
One of the best highlights for me of that show was the music, um, the fact that the normal uh, format worldwide, um, there was, was always a big push for uh, contemporary popular songs, and obviously it would mean a lot of American artists, uh, British artists, songs that people would sing. And what was amazing about The Voice Angola was the fact that the Angolan people, uh, contestants were singing songs from their country, their popular uh, um, or, or, or legendary songs, which was so beautiful to my ear, and I was in like in complete awe about the music, and and that's what made me uh, fall in love with that with that show more so that when I when the South African one started, I looked at it and go, mm, there's something missing there. It's it's not that heart and soul that I experienced working on on the voice Angola. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I to 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 totally agree. Uh, I can say that I'm, I'm in Angola right now, the last four years since I moved from, from SA, and nothing changing from that point of view. So they love their culture, they love their, they love their music. And in fact, I've been working in a show. Now we are stopped because of the pandemic the pandemic, uh, but we were working on a show. We are on season two. It's about music. It's not like, like The Voice. It's a small production, but huge for Angola, but small for international point of view. Uh, but uh, the, the music cho uh, choice is the same method. So we have a lot of kids. I would say 80%, 70% we choose old songs from old Angolan artists and that's great because that promotes culture and keeps the ancients alive. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, I remember when we had a chat that time that this, that wasn't your first time in South Africa, you were here before on another... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, well, it all began in 2013, 2014, when Angola started to produce um, international formats, TV shows, uh, particularly DSTV. So they wanted, they wanted to do the first big reality show, Big Brother in this case. And there is a politics by Endemol Shine world, worldwide that in this case, Africa, in Moshe and Africa, that the international formats to guarantee the quality, they have to be recorded in SA. Okay, so 
South Africa is, is the place to be to record big international shows. I agree, to totally agree. Uh, from that, from that we, they, they had to, re to recruit a Portuguese team because of the language. So I was lucky enough to come because I just speak Portuguese and I was working in the, in the industry and you know how, how it, it works. You know a guy that knows a guy in Portugal, they unite a team and they send us. So I came, uh, me and another 25 Portuguese people. It was a big crew because we need a lot of technical directors. Uh, so yeah, I embraced the project and the moment I've landed Africa for the first time, I fall in love totally. People, culture, music, uh, sightseeing, food, uh, energy. And I remember uh, the size of the I stakes that you love here. <laughs> And the prices yeah, yeah, for stakes yeah. compared to what you would pay at the for it at home. <laughs> yeah, they are unforgettable. <laughs> Which, okay, so so, um, you know, uh, as as South Africans, we we don't have a good reference to um, what you you know what industries are like, other than what's happening in the states and uh, uh, British, because you know the the relationship between South Africa and Britain. Um, it's very strong when it comes to broadcast because we adopted when TV started in South Africa, we adopted the BBC model. Mm -hmm. So um, how did you get into the TV industry in Portugal? What is the, 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 the method of getting into it? You know, like here in South Africa, we before it was a very apprenticeship base. You needed to know somebody that knows somebody that would give you the opportunity to learn a skill and via that that person would vouch for you and then other people would hire you more recently there's been a lot of schools that uh, people, uh, youngsters can go and train and, and you know and from there start the uh, apprenticeship journey how does it work in, in portugal okay well in portugal is practically the same um you you need to know the right person to have the opportunity to learn and from then step by step you grow and then you, you define yourself in the industry and then you are in the industry. Nowadays there, there's a lot of schools, there's a lot of courses, there are a lot of places that can teach you but they are very theoretically, you know. Portugal is a very particular place in Europe, it's very small, the industry is very small so there aren't a lot of places and for me my golden TV, what I really like, is multi-cam directing. There are very few places for that as well. So uh, you just have to live with it, you know. You can do right, if I'm correct in saying this, but it's a very, uh, it's um, an, an, a very uh, vicious industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah no, we, we all <laughs> have scars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, the feeling that works a little bit like that everywhere. When, when I was beginning, and even right now, so they just asked me, so Bernardo, my family and my friends, uh, where are you working? Uh, are you looking for work? Uh, you know, and I say, yes, but you know, working TV, in Portugal at least, if you go to LinkedIn search, if you go to a job platform, there is no jobs for TV there. There isn't. So you have hundreds of people working TV, but there is no job places announced online so it's it's you have to deal with this you have to to you have to go to the people you have to go to the place you have to know them you have to show them the availability to work even if it's for small money to show your value all free it's all free it all started off. <laughs> <laughs> which is nonsense for me you know even if if you're an, an intern you should get some Something, you know, your yeah. time and as value, so so you just have to keep so, asking. <laughs> now, my my reference to to broadcast uh, TV broadcast in Portugal would be from the time that I worked for SuperSport and uh, the amount of uh, soccer uh, your league your soccer league uh, um, matches. And the one thing I always uh, I'll never forget, especially when I used to have my little interns uh, 
especially the female interns, I would always tell them, I said, I've never seen the, the most good looking men referees with sleek hair. Everybody just looks like they, they just come out of a, a, a you know, hairdresser and everybody's just shiny. It was the most funniest thing to me <laughs> to see these oaks um, in your <laughs> professional soccer league. But, but then I thought of oh, the fact that if soccer is that big, it means you would have a big um, broadcast infrastructure to support um, the production of, of soccer. So is my assumption correct? Uh, yeah, soccer is a big thing in Portugal. There's a lot of sponsors. There's a lot of money, which means that this pandemic <laughs> hit really hard there. So they were obliged to finish the soccer TV broadcast tr the transmission, even if they didn't want to pr proceed because of the virus. But yeah, I can say that. But, but like I said, it, 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 even then, Portugal is small. Even there, even there. Uh, it, it's, it's a business that allows us to have a lot of jobs uh, in, in the, um, uh, from the TV point of, uh, uh, point of view. Um, but uh, has the same issues as I mentioned before, you know, uh, the vicious side, the low budget, uh, but uh, yeah, it gives a lot of people work in the, in, in the TV mm -hmm. broadcast. It's a big thing. So, you've, big thing. so you've seen the technical infrastructure here in South Africa. Um, yeah. If you compare um, mm -hmm. it to back home in Portugal, uh, how on Paul or the two uh, industries? From the equipment point of view? Well, equipment and technical, you know, like from the, the crew to the, the type of equipment yeah. used in control rooms, in like, especially for you with multi-camera, OB units, okay. um, you know, just give me a sense of com comparing what you've experienced in South Africa yeah. compared to mm -hmm. Portugal, and then we'll compare, uh, going on, we'll talk about Angola. Okay, uh, so well, well, comparing the from the technical point of view, you see, you've seen a lot of similar things. You know, the MCRs, the places how they are built, the vision mixer table, the multicam screen windows. They are very similar. Um, I, the 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 behavior, the behavior of the team, how people get along, how people it's it's practically the same. Well, I, the, in South Africa, I've met, uh, there's, a, there's a big multicultural um, environment. We have people from different places, different races. So uh, uh, I think that's a positive thing because you learn value things like uh, from other people, you know, from uh, the, the culture, the, the respect. And that can bring another kind of friendship different from in Portugal because it's the place where you live, you go, you work, you go home, you go to your family. So I had a, I had a more intensive experience in SA. Uh, if, you compare, the, the South, yeah. if you compare now South Africa to uh, Angola? <laughs> yeah, okay. So I, when, when I'm with someone that asks me how is to, to visit Africa because there is a lot of people who haven't come to Africa. I, I used to say there is South Africa and then there is the rest of Africa. Uh, uh, and, and if you go on history, it makes sense. Um, South Africa, uh, it's very different from Angola. Uh, they have the infrastructure, they have the equipment, they have the knowledge, they have the people, they have the experience, they have everything to get the job done. Basically, is that. In Angola, it's different. Angola, uh, a few years ago, was in war, so they are building the country slowly. Well, it's 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 going faster, you know, but uh, they are re uh, rebuilding the country. From the TV point of view, uh, you have a big national broadcaster. I'm aware that I don't know it personally because I don't work with them, but I know I'm aware that they have a lot of equipment. They, it's not not it's not top notch, but it is quite good. You, I can say it's they use Grass Valley Vision mixers. They have uh, a uh, full HD. Uh, they have a, only HD uh, transmission, uh, but they have they have uh, they have a, a um, outside 
no OB truck. Mm, OB, OB units, all yeah, the units. Yeah, uh, the units. Yes, they have some. Uh, I remember I, I've seen two huge. And then you uh, you have the private TV stations. I work in a private TV station, and uh, we have and we we now have good equipment and a nice in infrastructure. But let just don't forget that we are 15, 20 years uh, late uh, comparing to, to South Africa. Uh, but we, we, we can see some stimulants now, you know, uh, you have the Sony Full HD cameras, we have the Sony MVS Vision Mixers cameras, you, we have, we transmit in Full HD. Uh, from the, from the um, software, editing software point of view, it's a bit different because I remember I know it's uh, in SA in Portugal. We work a lot with Avid Media Composer, which I personally <laughs> yeah, no. like, especially for multi-camera editing. <laughs> Twenty exactly. cameras, what's it? Fifteen, ten cameras, yeah. Exactly, and in here they work more with Premiere, Adobe Suite package. But I see it as a tool. I have preference, of, of course, but it's a tool. But there, there, I, I don't know anyone with, with that works with Avid here. Okay, so we, as a private TV station that was born six years ago, we have a lot, but we still have a lot to do to, to keep up. Uh, but from the human resources point of view, it's the, it's the opposite. So uh, there is a problem in hiring people here because uh, you have to teach everything from scratch because there isn't a lot of the people with experience and that explains my presence here as well and my other colleagues from portugal right now in the company we are like uh, five portuguese people and five brazilians uh, and we try to teach everything we know and if i go back three years ago or four when i arrived now we have editors that they know what they do they have we have angolan people directing as well and they are very sure of what they are doing and they know what they are doing which is quite important so but it's not enough you know angolan it's is is one of the big big countries in sub-saharan africa uh, there's a lot of potential potential from the economical point of view but they are they need to restructure and reorganize their they have to, they need politics stability economic stability and the pandemic hit very hard here because they depend mainly on oil and the oil business is stopped basically um, but there is a lot to be done here i, I just arrived from portugal uh, five de five days ago i'm under a quarantine it's obliged by the government uh, just to be sure I was stuck in Portugal because there were no flights in the last five months, for five months. Yeah, well, our borders and haven't opened yet, international borders haven't exactly. stopped me up really. I was supposed to be in Zambia. In Zambia, yeah, okay. Even, even here, it's, it, it didn't open as well. They just make a special corridor with special authorizations for qualified people that are indispensable for the company. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's a special occasion. I don't know. Um, so when I was in for that time in Portugal for five months, uh, I, I have all I always have two feelings when I'm there. The first one is great because I'm with my friends and I I'm with my family and now I have a, a son, which is marvelous. But the other part is, it seem, always seems like everything is built or, or everything is done or everything has their own routine and is not going to evolve to something new or there's or at least there isn't that need. Hmm. And here the feeling is the opposite. And so more opportunity, yeah. just sense of more, uh, there are more opportunities in Africa, Angola, just to create new things and not just do as Absolutely. it was, do as it was. Absolutely. And we just start talking Angola here. You have Congo, you have Zambia, you have Guinea, you have Mozambique. I've been in Mozambique as well from working for this company, this TV station. I did a uh, concert music live concert there uh, there's a lot a lot to be done a lot to be done but uh, you have africa has its own rhythm and its own 
bureaucracy, the things, how they work. So sometimes I want to move in even faster, but I can't. Yeah, no, that's one thing that the East South Africans also struggle with when we go into the rest of Africa is the fact that um, things just don't work as quick as we would love to, you know, we like get in, get out, get done, move on. Yeah, it's move getting, on. Yeah. have a conversation, <laughs> go to the, yeah. the have a, or, or what's a juice together, and it's just a process. But, and I love it. I'm, I must be honest, I've grown into it. You have to grow into the, like every other place, you know, if you take the time to, to get to know the people's culture, mm -hmm. and you see the value that they see in their culture, and you don't impose your values, um, although you would impose, especially in TV, you would try and encourage people the different disciplines of coming before call time, uh, when you work, you work, you know, all those things, because it has an impact on the final delivery, that is just general. But I, I just love the level of when I, when I travel Uganda, all these places, I just love being there and coming to grips with what, what them, what they are, and not just imposing my South Africanism and our way onto people. Because in many ways, I always feel that South Africans are almost like the Americans. Um, when we tend to go into places, we come with this, this arrogance and our way is the only way is the best way. And I'm going, no, no, no take the time to to learn their way and then say, okay, I've got a suggestion. Because a lot of times I learn so much from people and go, okay, maybe, maybe I can incorporate <laughs> that into to what I do, you know? So I love, I, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. When my, 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 my goal with my studies, I've studied uh, a three-year degree and a master's degree in television, script writing, cinema, movies in Portugal. Um, and my goal was to work with movies. Cinema was my life. You know, I, I love movies, always love, and I still love documentaries as well, short films, any type. I love stories. And, but the moment I finished my studies, I realized how the hell I'm going to make a living doing movies in a small country as Portugal. Because when, you, when you're born somewhere like, USA or UK, I'm not going to say it's going to be easier, but at least there is an industry to explore. There's, you know, the chance is there. You have to fight for it. Where I come from, there isn't a lot. And the f it's not like I'm a quitter, but I need to make money. <laughs> so I've seen the TV as a, an opportunity to work. It has have differences, but it's similar as well. So it's fun as well. So, okay, let's give it a try. And from that until now, it's been TV, 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 TV. Um, and TV now is part of my passion as well. Um, but what I, what, what I want to reach with this is like, don't, we don't have to, to, to forget our main objective or our dream which is movies i want to make movies in the future or short documentaries because that gives me pleasure but we just have to figure out a way to make a living and for instance i'm aware that television it's an industry that is full of it of people and schools are keep throwing more people and more people and more people and I have a B, a B plan. So my B plan to make money is I'm, I'm doing some studies right now as well on e-commerce, digital marketing and e-commerce online selling. And that's a, a way that I can make money in the future. And probably I will fall in love as well for e-commerce because when you embrace it, you fall in love with it. And that allows me then to have some economic or finance comfort to allow me to do my own productions. Can be a way as well of being happy in the industry and not only working big broadcasters in this kind of environment, which I really appreciate, but um, you never know. You, you never, never know, know when this pandemic, yeah, yeah. And you remember uh, what I shared yeah. with uh, I, I'm not sure if you know 
because uh, the last time we met, I wasn't really into it as much as I am now. Um, but I've been training people how to use their mobile phones to create short films, to create um, documentaries, so that they don't have to wait for the big budgets or the big, uh, uh, you know, equipment to be able to create this content, and then also use Facebook, use social media platforms to try and make your money, uh, or make some money. That's what we're doing now. My show, Siraj says, is mm -hmm. such an example because um, I I record this with uh, interesting people like yourself. And then I go and get uh, sponsors, which people will see on the bottom of the screen to pay to have their, their brand on the screen. And then I obviously put it onto Facebook. And because I understand Facebook's um, uh, uh, um, paid um, uh, um, model, um, I can guarantee people certain numbers of views. You know, so it's, it's like you do, like you said, it's part of that process of learning and and adapting and, and pursuing our dreams. Yeah. I, I believe there's some, someone famous have a quote. I can't remember who or, or exactly the quote, but it's something, the message is adaptability. It's the key of success. You know, the way we adapt to the world, it's how we win. And, with, how co we win. and with COVID, uh, the, uh, we've been forced in so many ways more than before. Um, because mm -hmm. of COVID, that uh, what we regarded as our safe nets, as the, our forms of income, as for some of us have eroded it, we, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, I believe the mobile, as you said, it's the future. You know, when you, 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 with this, you can do everything with this. You can create a millionaire business with this tool, you know, if that's your purpose it's not mine for sure i just want to get some <laughs> but well, you get, know get your journey oh, going start making your first uh, documentary <laughs> about life in angola and then send it to me and i'll put it onto my uh, mobile first Africa instance, facebook page it's the big brother method people want reality people people want the truth you know so they will see it they would see it i'm sure about it looking forward to it i'm <laughs> gonna hold you to that <laughs> thank you so much uh this was so cool catching up with you once again after the four years um uh, yeah and and uh, yeah um, thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it um thank you. thank you for sharing the insights because um you know mm -hmm. we we know what we are doing here in south africa and we look at the rest of africa as some place that we have to go and help but um but it's also nice just to get a perspective of people that are actually doing it, coming from Europe, you know, making the making your life here in in Africa, uh, um, and 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 sharing your knowledge. So, um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, can't wait to meet you in Angola. Um, try my best to get there, uh, and uh, and then we can go for a steak again somewhere in <laughs> in Angola.